What's up YouTube? It's your man MD Jonesy 529 Today I'm going to show you how to install Retroarch for Windows 10 and play PS1 games. And I'm also going to show you the best settings so your game can run the best and look the best. Let's get started. Well first you want to start out with downloading Retroarch. And we're going to download the nightly version. Uh, you can also download the stable version you want. It's going to be the same process. Uh, the nightly one's just updated more often and the uh, stable one's supposed to be more stable so it's not updated as much and it's starting to download should not take too long okay it looks like Windows has blocked this application um, it thinks it's harmful but it's not uh, so just click keep uh, show more keep anyways yep RetroArch is safe it's not going to hurt your PC and we're just going to wait for it to run. Open file. Uh, again, it's trying to stop us. Just click more info and run anyways. Again, safe application. Nothing shady here. Oh yeah, we're just waiting for it to boot up. And just click through the installation process. Next. Uh, read through this entire legal document. Understand every single word and uh, you can choose what destination folder you could hit browse and put it somewhere I'm just gonna leave it default and if you want you can click this I already had the stuff for it so I don't really need to uh, I might just do it just to show you guys and start a new folder uh, sure why not and we're just gonna wait for this to install here Okay, I finished installing and this popped up here. This is for the direct X I clicked earlier. Um, I guess I accept. Uh, no, no one uses a Bing bar. Like, come on. And I already had the stuff, so it's just going to tell me I already have the uh, components. Okay. And click finish. And you should now have a shortcut for RetroArch on your desktop there it is now that we have RetroArch downloaded what we want to do is get it ready to play PS1 games and to do that we need to start out by downloading the Beetle PSX HW core just scroll down to Sony the manufacturer for the Sony PlayStation go to Beetle PSX HW download it now to get RetroArch to run PS1 games, you're going to need to give it a BIOS file. It needs to be formatted like this. This is what you need to name it. Okay, the legal way to get a BIOS file is to dump it yourself. Uh, that's the only legal way to do it. You know, there's illegal ways to do it too. Uh, it's Google search away is what I've heard. Uh, but basically copy your BIOS file once you do have one. And open file location on RetroArch here and go to the system folder and place it here just paste it right there and, and again it needs to be formatted this way this is what needs to be named for RetroArch to recognize it now we want to set up the content to be run and I just put it on the desktop here Digimon Digital Card Battle and you know you got your disk file here and this is your Q file so basically a Q file um, will tell the RetroArch to play this piece of content right here. It doesn't have to be a Q file necessarily, it's just got to be one of the formats that RetroArch supports. You can look that up, but I got a Q file here. This is what it looks like in Notepad++. It has the file right here in between quotations is the is the name of the file right there. Pretty simple. And again, it just tells RetroArch to play this disk image file. Now everything's set up. Now we can just boot up RetroArch. And uh, you can just plug in a PS4 controller to operate the controls. Uh, right out of the box, it works for my PS4 controller. It probably supports other controllers as well. This, this is just what I use. So load the content, just find where it's at. And users, I got mine on the desktop, so I gotta go down to desktop. Did you mind your card battle? And see, it's recognizing the Q file. 
And just like that, we're running a game. Now we're going to go over the settings for RetroArch to get it looking its best and running great as well. And we're going to start with the front end settings. We're going to go on a video, output, and here you can change the default hardware renderer. Uh, by default, it's GL. We're going to change it to Vulkan. If your PC does not support Vulkan, you can just change it back to GL. It's fine. Uh, but Vulkan offers a lot more advantages over the other ones, in my opinion. You can also change the screen resolution here and whatnot. Uh, full screen mode, you can change it, the full screen on mode or off. You can also change it with Alt Enter. Uh, windowed, I guess this is windowed settings. You can change window width and height. Scaling, this is one you might want to change. You can manually change the uh, screen to 69 or 43, uh, or you can just keep it core provided and the core will do it for you. And that's it for the front end settings. And now we're going to get into core options. And to do that, you need to load a piece of content. And once you're in, you're going to want to hit F1 to get into the options. Go down to options. And we're going to start out with the video settings. And your settings might look slightly different if you're not using Vulkan as your hardware renderer. That's fine. Still follow along. And uh, we're going to start out with internal GP resolution. This is the most important setting. It makes the game look beautiful. Uh, higher is more demanding, but also better looking. So if you are running slow, uh, turn it down. Uh, dithering, basically by default, it's on. Uh, and all dithering is is dots to hide low color depth. If you turn it off, uh, you get more color depth. And then there's a uh, texture UV all set. You want that on. Texture filtering, I use XBR. Uh, it's computationally intensive. So if you want, you might want to play around with this setting if uh, you are experiencing slowdowns in game. Uh, nearest is the default. It looks like, you know, stock PS1. And there's other filters that are less intensive. Uh, exclude sprites from filtering. Exclude 2D polygons from filtering. Basically, you want to turn these on if your filtering is making your 2D elements look janky. And same thing with adaptive smoothing. You might want to turn that off if... Uh, the smoothing is making things look bad. And multi-sample anti-aliasing. Yeah, you want this as high as you can handle. It smooths out the 3D uh, models, so it looks smoother and better. And MDEC, UU, whatever, I have that on. I think it's for the movies. Um, track textures, I think that's it for the video settings. Now we're going to move on to the PGXP settings and you're going to want to turn that turn that to memory plus CPU and it's going to fix a lot of graphical glitches a lot of them uh, they have a warning for it being buggy or whatever you can use memory only if it's if it really is buggy and I just turn on primitive culling and perspective correct texturing this fixes a lot of my graphical issues I don't really play around with the geom geometry tolerance or the vertex cache, you can if you want. I don't know what they do. I don't really see a difference for me. And the last option I'm going to cover is CD access method, and we're going to change it to pre cache. And that just makes the loading better. And there you have it. That's how you install RetroArch on Windows 10 and run PS1 games with the best settings. If this video helped you, let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions, Go ahead and leave those in the comments below. I would love to get with you and answer your question as soon as possible. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, peace.